The CTBUH 9th Annual Awards Ceremony and Dinner was held on the 21st of October 2010 in the iconic Mies van der Rohe designed SR Crown Hall on the Illinois Institute of Technology. The event recognizes the four CTBUH Regional Best Tall Building Awards winners as well as two Lifetime Achievement Award winners. Attended by 340 international guests representing many of the top firms in the tall building industry, guests mingled over cocktails before being seated for the dinner service and bestowing of the awards. The CTBUH chairman, Song Dae Kim, started the program off with a welcome message and invited CTBUH Vice Chair David Scott on stage to recognize Jerry Carey for her 28 years of service to the council. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the Council on Tall Building and Urban Habitat, I'm very pleased and honored to welcome all of you to the annual Best Tall Building Award Ceremony. We are all gathered here to celebrate the Best Tall Building for the year of 2010. Some of you came from all over the world, places such as the United Arab Emirates, Italy, and many other countries. I sincerely appreciate your presence here tonight. As you may already know, this event is held in Crown Hall, one of the masterpieces of one of the greatest architects of modern architecture, Ms. Van der Rohe. I hope that the best tall building in each of the four regions around the world will be respected and loved in the same manner that the Crown Hall is. The third edition of the award book is now published. It has great photographs and insightful information on the buildings which we are celebrating now. Each of you has a ticket which allows you to claim your uh, personal copy of the awards book at the podium desk after ceremony. Please enjoy your dinner tonight. We will have the chair of the award committee, Mr. Gordon Gill, announcing the overall winner of the Best Hall Building Award shortly. Now, I'd like to introduce a very important person within the council's history. She worked and contributed to the council for the last 20 years as the operations manager. Ladies and gentlemen, please let's all give Jerry Carey a big hand in appreciation for her dedication and hard work. <laughs> I, like, and I would like to invite the CTBH Vice Chair, David Scott, onto the stage, please. Jerry has been with us for 28 years, and I'm not sure if this is what she wants. <laughs> Actually, if you joined the council, um, probably there are very few people who joined the council before Jerry was involved. She's been with us for 28 years, and, uh, and when the council moved to Chicago, and. Uh, and has now developed a large uh, group here who are working at IIT. Uh, Jerry has, uh, this year, has left the council after 28 years with us. And it is a very sad for the council, and we are honouring her, her here this evening and thanking her for all the hard work and effort. She's been the face of the council for many years, we really have appreciated her, and she will always be welcome and invited to return. Uh, so I'd like you to put your hands together and thank Jerry for her input over these years uh, and wish her all the best in her future career. Jerry is a performer and has sung on Broadway many times. I hope she's now going to give us a little number. <laughs> <laughs> no. 
No, when I, when I joined the council in 1981, I never realized the uh, adventures I would go on, the many interesting people that I would meet, and the many friends that I would make over all of those years. So I thank the council and all of the leaders, past and present, for all of the memories that I, that I have uh, that I can take with me in whatever path may lead me in Bethlehem. Thank you. <laughs> Guests then enjoyed their first course before CTBUH Executive Director Anthony Wood took the stage to introduce Gordon Gill, who served as the CTBUH Awards Chair for his second term. Gordon said a few words before bestowing the Council's Lifetime Achievement Awards. Uh, thank you, Anthony. Um, yes, this has been my second year and it has been the best uh, five years of my life. Um, <laughs> um, first of all, I'd like to thank uh, Chairman Kim, uh, David Scott, of course, Anthony Wood, and I'd like to extend a special thanks to uh, Steve Henry and Peter Weissmantle for all their support this year. Um, it's been a great year. We've had, I think, over 85 entries this year up from 54 last year, so it's an incredible increase. We have uh, seven jury members. Um, unfortunately, not everyone could be with us this year, but I can tell you that it was our usual um, intense and celebrated discussions as always. Um, I'd just like to take a moment to acknowledge those jury members. Um, Ahmed Abdulzarak from Samsung is here tonight. Uh, Bruce Kuwabara from KPMB in Toronto is here. Um, Matthias Schuler from Transolar. Unfortunately, I don't think he could make it. Mom Sam Wong from WOHA. Peter Murray from the New London Architectural Center. And of course, Anthony and myself. Um, I'd like to start. Uh, <clears throat> would like to start things off this evening with uh, the Lynn S. Beadle Achievement Award this year recognizing William Peterson of Cohen Peterson Fox. This award recognizes the extraordinary contributions to the advancement of tall buildings and the urban environment in one's career. Um, before Bill comes up, I actually have a letter that I need to read to him. So bear with me a minute. Dear Bill, it is with great sadness that I'm writing you, instead of being with you, to share in the joy of this evening and the celebration of your selection for the Lynn S. Beadle Lifetime Achievement Award. I was hoping to be able to pay tribute to you in person, but I unfortunately have commitments in the UK that cannot be changed and therefore will miss this very special evening. Bill, there is no one more deserving of this award than you, and I am delighted and proud that you have been so recognized for your outstanding achievements for the design of tall buildings by such a distinguished body as the Council on Tall Buildings and Urban Habitat. I clearly remember those days when we first met, when you were at IM Pay, and I was trying to have you join me at John Carl Wernicke, which you eventually did. And then at a later date, <clears throat> discussing with you the formation of the new firm, Cohen Pedersen Fox, I recognize and admire your talent then, and you have continued to design beautiful, iconic, and functional buildings during a career which has spanned a period of almost 50 years, and will continue to do so for some time to come, with even more outstanding accomplishments. We have been very fortunate to have the help and commitment of so many talented partners and key individuals that have helped us build a terrific firm with projects across the globe. For me, the spirit of the firm when, when we first started, it has continued and progressed through the years. We have mentored and given so many young people, and particularly our 18 partners, an opportunity to design buildings that play a key role in the built environment, states and countries around the globe. I have truly enjoyed our friendship and working together in treating a wonderful and talented firm. I am proud to be your partner these 34 years. Best wishes for continued success, and congratulations, Jean Cohn. Please join me in welcoming Bill Peterson to the stage. Thank you.
I prepared uh, some, some words, but um, after speaking so much this afternoon, perhaps I can just talk to you. Um, a number of years ago, Donna Robertson invited me to come here uh, to give Myron Goldsmith the Myron Goldsmith lecture in this very room. And every one of us who works with the tall building has to be very much aware of the accomplishments that were made uh, within these walls because they're fundamental to the design uh, of the tall building. When you're a young person, uh, you make a lot of very important decisions. Fortunately for me, uh, two of the most important decisions I made uh, turned out really well. Um, let me start with the second most important decision. Uh, the second most important decision was to join Gene Cohn and Shelley Fox in partnership. Very simply stated, uh, I wouldn't be here tonight had it not been for that decision. Some of you this afternoon may have heard about my most important decision, uh, which was made 50 years ago, 50 years ago this month, as a matter of fact. And that was when I asked my wife Elizabeth to marry me. So uh, this month of October 19, 1960 to 2010 is a very important uh, period. One of, the, one of the wonderful things about receiving this award uh, is the opportunity to be able to invite back here uh, many of the people who worked with me in collaboration in creating these buildings. Uh, and we have tonight two full tables of people that I collaborated with and they collaborated with me. And frankly, none of this would have been possible uh, without the tremendous commitment uh, of these individuals. Uh, speaking of the tall building, uh, Cass Gilbert said maybe over 100 years ago that the tall building is a structure that makes the land pay. Well, this concept of the tall building as a financial instrument, for me, was somewhat dispiriting, particularly for those of us who really believe uh, in the potential of this building from a social perspective. But the last, what, 15, 20 years have entirely changed that picture. I mean, we are very close to the point where the tall building will be able to return as much as it consumes. And that, I think, really points to um, an ennobling mission that, that we have. Now, the technological advance of the tall building, I think, is perhaps uh, inevitable. What is not as inevitable is the advance of the tall building from a humanistic perspective. I had the privilege of uh, knowing Lynn Beadle. Uh, Lynn had asked me to speak at some of the early seminars uh, for the council. And I know how committed uh, Lynn was to the concept of the tall building uh, as something that participated in the urban environment. Title of the Institute, the Council of Tall Buildings and Urban Habitat, and it was clearly intended to be able to develop this balance between technology and, and humanism. And so I tonight very proudly accept this honor in his name um, for all of its implications. Thank you very much. The Fosler Kahn Medal this year is awarded to Professor 
Israel Scenic. This award recognizes excellence in design and or research that has made a significant contribution to the design of tall buildings and the built urban environment. Professor Scenic is recognized as one of the foremost structural engineers and pioneers in the field of tall buildings and special structures. As we are all aware, um, we were all very saddened to hear that Professor Scenic passed away last month uh, with our sincere condolences to his family who are here tonight, we'd like to invite his daughter, Beatrice Scenic Ackerman, to accept the award on her father's behalf. I, um, I want to take a moment to tell you that you should be very proud of belonging to this organization. It's of course a prominent and prestigious body in the AEC world, and it's instrumental in promoting and encouraging excellence in the built environment. I can say though that I've seen a side of this very special group that possesses a level of elemental kindness and warmth that soars far above the highest of human values. Since my father's passing, Anthony Wood, his team, and the awards committee representing the people of CTVUH have shown the most extraordinary sensitivity and support to our firm and our family during a very difficult time. So for us, it's a particular honor to be accepting this award from such an honorable group. It is with great pride that I accept the Fosler Rahman Khan Medal in recognition of my father Israel Seinuk's achievements for a lifetime of stretching the horizons of his profession to devise ever more creative, innovative designs that are efficient both economically and structurally. My father was thrilled to have been awarded this prestigious medal. He practiced and taught his profession with joyful enthusiasm. And just knowing that he had been recognized by the Council on Tall Buildings and Urban Habitat for his work brought him profound contentment and satisfaction. He so very much wanted to be here this evening, and I truly believe that in some way he is. Thank you very much. We'll now take a moment to recognize this year's CTBUH Fellows. CTBUH Fellows are recognized as having contributed to the Council over an extended period of time and in recognition of their work and sharing of knowledge in the design and construction of tall buildings and their urban habitat. This year, the council recognizes Thomas McCool from Turner International, Moira Moser, it's okay, you can applaud. <laughs> Moira Moser from M. Moser Associates in Hong Kong, and Shankar Nair, Tengen Associates. Unfortunately, Moira and Shankar weren't able to join us this evening, but we'd like to invite Tom McCool up to say a few words. Unfortunately, I'm losing my voice, so you just have to bear with it. I'm really pleased to be selected as a fellow of the Council on Tall Buildings and Urban Habitat. I first became involved with the Council in 1982 through the membership in the Chicago High Rise Committee. It did not take long for Lynn Beadle to draft me into the monograph work. Lynn was a great influence and to all of us, often getting us to volunteer before we even knew what we were volunteering for. In my 28 years of involvement with the council, I have seen the dream of Lynn Beadle and Foss Lacan realized beyond their expectations, in great part through the uh, 
leadership of Anthony Woods, Ron Klemensik, and David Scott over the past several years. And it's been carried forward over the past year with Anthony and Professor Kim, and I'm certain it'll continue for the future. Unfortunately, Mo Mo Moser and Shankar Nair are the two professionals designated as fellows of the council are unable to be with us this evening. And therefore, it is with a sense of pride that I accept this honor on behalf of myself and my two absent colleagues. So. Also, we'd like to ask, uh, on behalf of Moira Moser, we'd like to ask David Weinberg to come up and say a few words. Special congratulations to all the honorees tonight. Um, I had the pleasure of spending a couple of years at KPF, so it's great to see so many friends and colleagues here, and congratulations, Bill, on your achievement. Maura sends you her, her greetings from Hong Kong and appreciation for the recognition that this award represents. Her professional lifetime has been spent building a firm, Mojo Associates, that does architecture for corporate facilities largely within tall buildings in major urban cities, such as New York, London, Hong Kong, Singapore, and Shanghai, designed by colleagues such as yourself. So the focus of the council and its international nature have been relevant to everything more in our firm does. As a company, we are constantly working together to find the most effective interface between the corporate facilities we design and the buildings and urban environments where they are located. At Moore and most of our senior leaders of our firm are architects. We are now also expanding our design of architecture from the inside out to include the base buildings themselves, particularly in China, Asia, and India, where there's increasing growth and demand. Relevant to all these endeavors, the global interaction with CTBUH colleagues over the years has been a pleasure and a continuing source of new knowledge. Moira and those of us in the company hope that our contribution of knowledge to the council about what people who occupy and work in tall buildings need, those buildings will be a small need in those buildings, will be a small contribution to the body of CTBUH knowledge and to making better buildings in better urban environments. Thank you. Following the presentation of the Lifetime Achievement Awards, a short break in the ceremony allowed for the dinner course to be served and guests to enjoy their meals and socialize before the ceremony continued with the presentation of the Best Tall Building Awards. CTBUH Executive Director Anthony Wood took the stage to explain that the Best Tall Building Awards recognize the team achievement in tall building projects from around the globe which have made extraordinary contributions to the advancement of tall buildings and the urban environment. He then presented the America's Regional Trophy to the Bank of America Tower, New York. The award was accepted by the project's architect Richard Cook of Cook & Fox and Lisa Spritz of Building Owners Bank of America. I think these tall buildings that we make, they say something about the goals and aspirations of our generation. It's more than just one building and some techno whiz bangs that go into them. They say something about what we believe in and what do we care about. So I'd like to uh, thank you very much for the award and uh, encourage you all to go make a difference. Thank you. I just want to say thank you to uh, CTBUH, to Plus Fox, to the Durst Organization. I think that when uh, this building was first conceived about, I guess now, eight years ago. Um, I don't think we had any idea that it would have the effect and the impact that it has. It's been a symbol of the sustainability that now um, is a part of the way we do business. This is a great honor. Thank you very much. We really appreciate it. The pinnacle at Duxton, Singapore, took the trophy for the Asia and Australasia region and leaders from the design team took the stage to accept the award. Giving the acceptance speech on behalf of the team was design architect Peng Beng Ku of Arc Studio. Thank you very much, um, me. And I'd like to um, thank the CTBH for this fantastic award. Um, 
the tall buildings in, in many cities are an option, um, but in Singapore, it is not really an option. It is a necessity. I'm incredibly privileged, and we feel really blessed and really touched by uh, what we see in Chicago, and to be here uh, accepting this award. So, thank you very much. Gordon Gill then presented the best hall building for the Europe region to Broadcasting Place Leeds, and the award was accepted by the project architect Alex Whitebread of Fielding Clegg Bradley Studios and building owner George Downing of Downing Development. At Downing's, we're already very proud of what we've achieved with Broadcasting Place, and so to be considered for this award is an, another fantastic accolade. I think, I think working on this has been, for, for me, a very, very positive experience, but I think it's been uh, an abject lesson in how you can bring a number of possibly quite conflicting um, groups together um, in a very challenging site in what actually would be considered in, in Britain and in Europe a, a, a site uh, in terms of a sort of conservation area listed building context that you would not build tall and that you would not build particularly brave. And I think what has been very positive for us is that we've hopefully managed to prove that you can do both. So uh, thank you very much. The Burj Khalifa Dubai won the best tall building for the Middle East and Africa region, and leaders from the design team took the stage to accept the award. Giving the acceptance speech on behalf of the team was Mr. Ali Ode of Turner Construction International and the building's engineer, Bill Baker of Skidmore, Owings & Merrill. You know, someone has to have the dream, okay? Uh, we as architects and engineers and contractors can only, we can't, we can't, we can, we can help have, ha, realize the dream, but someone has to have the dream. And, and uh, it was the uh, Mohammed Alibar and uh, the, the people in, in Dubai who had the dream and the wherewithal to take what was basically a piece of desert, it was an empty uh, military base and turn it into this uh, huge development. Uh, you know, it's a, it's a vote of optimism, it's a vote of hope, it's, it's people who are, who are thinking about the future. Um, in a very, very positive manner who create these skyscrapers. And, and so clearly, you know, without, the, uh, without that vision, uh, there, there would be nothing. Following the presentation of the regional awards, the audience was surprised to hear Anthony Wood announce that before presenting the Best Tall Building Overall Award, a new award had been created this year, the Global Icon Award. That there was a project out of the four regional winners which really, um, people felt best tall building of the year was not really appropriate. Um, we're talking a building that has so significantly changed the whole landscape of tall buildings that it needs to, needed to be recognized. This special project was revealed to be the Burj Khalifa, recognized for its profound impact not only on its regional context, but on the genre of tall buildings globally. The Burj Khalifa team retook the stage to accept this Global Icon Award. George Astathiou of the project's architects, Skidmore Owings and Merrill, said a few words, followed by Mr. Ali Ode of Turner Construction. Continuously from the preceding night, which happened to be the New Year Eve, I call Mr. Ken from Samsung, who is now tonight with us, and he came and assisted us to provide access to the elevator to the top most floors. Mr. Akbar and I escorted Sheikh Muhammad through the project. He was obviously very happy to see the finished tower and complimented the effort of all parties involved. It is a source of inspiration for all of us. Rounding out the evening was the presentation for the best tall building overall, which was awarded to Broadcasting Place. Alex and George returned to the stage to accept the award. Thank you very much, guys, for getting the Global Icon of the Century Award. <laughs> I'm going to be famous in London for at least six hours. <laughs> And arranging the events, and particularly thanks to Alex for, and his team for designing such a wonderful building. Thank you very much. Thank you.